Hey y'all, it's me Tiffany. So if you've been here for a while, you know I've been going through Ellen Hopkin books and doing individual videos on each one. The smart thing to do, it would be to do the book that came out within a couple of months of me posting this, but I'm doing them in the order I want to do them. So I did impulse for my last video, so I'm going to do the sequel perfect. It just seems like the natural choice to go to next. I'm not always the best when it comes to disclaimers, but with Ellen Hopkin books, she likes kind of the shock factor and hitting hard topics, so I kind of have to do it if I want to be responsible with these books. Talk about eating disorder, mess up parts of the modeling industry, racism, toxic relationships, uh, drug abuse, which fortunately drugs are not as big a part of this as they were the last book or the cranks trilogy which the crank trilogy is about meth so it makes sense if that's not in there so it's nice to see an ellen hopkin books that handles more topics that's not centered around drugs basically so this book isn't actually a sequel it's more of a parallel story companion so i don't in my opinion i don't think you actually have to uh read impulse to read this but i feel like you're missing a lot if you don't but we have Kara, which is like the sister of Connor from the first book. Then there is Sean, uh, Kara's boyfriend. Kendra, who dated Connor. And then there's Andre, which is a brand new character. So yes, there is an additional point of view in this and it takes place from like, or it alternates points of view. And yes, this is verse, just like almost all of her other books. And I thought that was interesting that she added a new point of view because a lot of complaints with Impulse was there was too much going on and the points of view weren't distinct enough, which I agree. That has to be really hard to accomplish in a verse format, but she added a new character and I do like this one better than I like Impulse, but I think it's nice to see different forms of issue. I mean, there are drugs in this, but... It's just nice to see a different type of issue instead of reading a lot of books about drugs over and over in like the same format, you know? So Kara has issues with her parents just like Connor does, you know, their siblings. She doesn't know if she wants to be with Sean anymore and she's bullied because of things she discovers about herself. Sean is a sports fanatic and he has uh, mental health issues that pop up because he works out all the time and body issues. So it's interesting to see that from a dude's point of view, which a lot of guys do have those issues, but we mostly just talk about it from a woman's point of view. So that's one thing I will credit this book is, it's nice to see it from a guy's point of view. Andre wants to be a dancer and goes to art school and his parents are very against this because they see that as a feminine thing. So. They think he must be gay if he wants to go to art school. So that's an interesting dynamic to see as well. Um, I really like seeing like toxic forms of like gender roles, especially towards dudes, because while we do talk about them with women and there's a lot with women, it's just nice to sometimes see the other perspective. And I'm sure there's plenty of books on this. It's just maybe the bubble that I am in. So Kendra dated Connor, but her and her mom want to be perfect and they do pageants and modeling beauty and they kind of feed off each other, which I've never been big into like, you know, like the beauty pageant thing. Like I've never really cared for it. Like uh, there's a couple of shows like Insatiable and I've seen like Dumpling, but like I didn't watch Toddlers and TRs. I didn't watch any of that. No, nobody in my life actually did any of that stuff guy or girl but it always seems like it could get toxic really really quick which makes sense it's about vanity and your looks and I know there's other things to it but from an outsider that's all you see right so I think it's interesting to see that dynamic and she works out all the time because she's trying to keep the perfect body her sister has problems with her medication and her sister dates Andre which kind of helps I guess link him in the story a little bit. I know I talked more about spoilers and impulse but I kind of don't want to get into as many spoilers in this as I have some of the other ones because 
I've noticed this book does not get that much love or a lot of people hate it impulse and just don't want to pick this up if you absolutely hate the verse format or hate the multiple point of views this definitely isn't the book for you but I do think this one is better than impulse so I kind of want to help make it easier for you to get into it without being spoiled too hard and I'm still thinking about how I want to do these Ellen Hopkins videos I know some of the books I go into a lot more details some I keep either minor spoilers or whatever. I'm still trying to figure that out. There's a lot of these books, so I probably won't figure it out to the last book. But all of the characters go through very heart-wrenching things. There's a lot of tough topics. It's very emotional. It's very dramatic, but that's why we love Ellen Hopkins. I think the words flow very nicely. And it's interesting to see two guys and two girls. Um, sometimes I do think their points of view blend in a little bit and you have to think about who's saying it but each character feels more distinct than they did in like the last one or in Fallout if you've read Fallout since Crank is probably her most popular book so I feel like more people would have read Fallout than her other books with multiple points of view but I do think she does a better job at making distinct characters even if sometimes they read a very similar but just because of the world that they're in it's harder to get them confused which is really hard to do in verse format and it's hard to do with four characters four characters is a lot so this book definitely puts the first book to a close and I do not believe she's gonna be adding anything else to this but when she does do sequels they're very far apart but the way this ends I highly doubt she's entering back into this world so I will say this this book is a lot slower than other Ellen Hopkin books and it also, as I mentioned a few times, it hits different subject matter and like levels of importance even if some of the stuff has been mentioned in other books. And I think it's just a nice pace, especially if you're going to be binging Ellen Hopkins, which I'm not sure if that's like the best way to handle her stuff because there's just so much heavy topic matter, so much verse format and while she's mostly the author of read verse format for i have read a few other books and in my opinion sometimes it's just good to read something really different that's in between formats like this even if the books are phenomenal you know just like a palette cleanser of sorts i think the issues that each character faces which i mean i know there's kids who do drugs i know there's kids who do self-harm and yada, yada yada right but i feel like there's more teens facing body issues facing like questioning who they are in the world things like that the topics faced in this seem more relatable to a higher number of people not saying the other books couldn't you know like she has a book about like mormonism and things like that and i just feel like the topics in this are just going to be a little bit more frequent to a higher number of people and I like that a lot and I like that we got more Mel's point of view and overall I think this is a pretty decent book hey guys that is it if you like this book didn't like this book let me know in the comment section below and I will see you next time